So why do we care about crypto? Cryptocurrency is one of the only things I know of that's actually making the world a better place. It's the best performing asset class that's ever existed. And it can get the government's dirty, grubby hands out of the money printing business. We have the separation of church and state in the United States. It's worked out very, very well. And we should have the separation of state and money printing, which it kind of tried to do with the Federal Reserve because it's not actually federal at all. It's a private company. It's pretty funny. You know, they've got truth and advertising laws that make it so that you can't just stick the word bank in your company name. There's some other restricted words as well. So I find it a little bit odd that you can uh, have a federal reserve that's not federal. It's not the government. It's just a private company. It seems a little misleading. So what is out there that's really making the world a better place? We've got eggs at all-time high prices. They're now, on average, $5 a dozen in the United States. We've got... Uh, the dollar at nearly all-time low purchasing power. The things I see that are getting better in the world, best performing asset class that's ever existed, cryptocurrency. Your bank doesn't have 100% uptime. Crypto uh, kind of does. Bitcoin kind of does. Ethereum kind of does. Hex kind of does. Your bank doesn't. Your credit cards don't. Electric cars, now... Electric cars are the quickest things, at least Tesla's, the quickest and safest things. It's very nice. We don't have the infrastructure to support them at scale. There's not enough charging. There's not enough cobalt. Uh, the cobalt that's mined, it's not mined in that pretty of a way. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of poor folks getting their hands dirty to, to mine that cobalt, I hear. Now, I don't know whether that's the best thing they could do with their time, and maybe that's awesome for them. Maybe that very crappy job is better than dying with no job. I'm not sure. So, rockets that land themselves, cheaper global internet, SpaceX does both of those. Quickest, safest cars have ever existed. I mean, the Tesla just fell off of like a 250 foot embankment in California called like Devil's Peak or something. Everyone walked away. This guy apparently tried to kill his family. Ran it off the cliff. Everyone walked away. A lot of other cars have done that trip. Nobody walked away. So, I like CPUs, they're getting better. I don't really care about GPUs much because I don't game, so they're just useless to me. Like, I don't use GPUs for anything. I always buy the most expensive one and never use it. It's very wasteful. Um, GPUs are getting better. CPUs are getting better. Crypto. Chat GPT kind of like uh, AI kind of stuff. It's getting interesting. Rockets that land themselves. Electric cars. I mean, look, my 1,000 horsepower Ferrari, humble brag, it's got electric on it. You know, it's got a 7.2 kilowatt battery, can do 15 miles. But the important part is that it discharges and charges real quick, does torque fill, um, which is the reason the SF90 is the quickest Ferrari ever made. It has the best track times at Fiorano, which is uh, Ferrari's test track in Italy, where they beat to death all the Ferraris to make sure that they're fit for public consumption. You know, it beats the LaFerrari, it beats the F40, F50, the Enzo, beats everything. It's the quickest Ferrari ever made. Any track it's been on, it wins quickest production car, which is what a four-wheel drive, 1,000 horsepower Ferrari will do. Well, anyway, why is it able to do that? Well, in part because of that electric torque fill that lets the front wheels pull you out of corners and, uh, you know, gives you amazing instant torque from zero RPM which a gas engine can't do. So why do I mention this to you guys? If we can get cryptocurrency to be fully adopted, then the government won't be able to go to war with the money that they steal from the citizens. Every single day, the government steals your money. Not by stealing the units of the money, but by stealing the purchasing power of the money. 
So you've got the same units, but your units don't buy anything because no one needs your money because the government's got the printing press in the back printing all day, every day, and it goes to their friends, not you. So their buddies are getting all that fresh new money hot off the printer before the inflation's hit. It's called the Cantalon effect. And then you get it last. And so a funny saying I saw on Twitter was, you got an $1,100 stimulus check, they got $20 trillion and gave it to their friends, and now you're stuck with uh, the inflation. So you got 1100 bucks. their friends got $4 trillion, or really $20 trillion, some, some huge number of trillion. And now you've got all-time high prices. Now something that I know, I know so many things that most people don't, and since i got an hour to spend with you guys, I'm going to do my best to educate you. The Federal Reserve has two mandates. It's called dual mandate. One is to keep inflation at 2%. The other is to make sure everyone has jobs. Now, making sure everyone has jobs is a pretty hard one to do because printing or not printing money doesn't actually hire anyone. So that's a weird one. And so right now, they know that the inflation is too high. A couple days ago, they did a survey of all the people that are on the board of deciding whether interest rates are going to go up or not. And they all said, yeah, we're not going to lower rates in 2023. We, we see no, we don't, the language was along the lines of, we don't see any way that they're going to be lowering rates in 2023. And so as they raise rates, it makes money more expensive, literally. So people with mortgages that have adjustable rates have now two or three X their monthly cost of paying the mortgage, which for you people who aren't in America, mortgage means home loan. Uh, people are living day to day. They don't have in their budget or their earning potential an extra two or three X on the largest expense they have, which is their housing. It's basically going to cause a lot of people to get foreclosed on. We also see the steepest decline in home sales I think in history in the United States, home sales are down like on average 40%, I believe. Now that's not dollar figure because dollars are all inflated. That's the number of sales. So the number of sales has fallen 40% this year compared to last year. That's a big fall. So the Fed, in order to fulfill its dual mandate and get inflation down to 2%, is going to have to keep raising rates. And in the 70s, they raised rates to, I believe, 19%. Paul Volcker, who was the chairman of the Fed at the time, raised rates to 19% in order to finally stop the runaway inflation that was happening. And there was a period when his predecessor uh, tried to lower rates early, and it didn't work. And the market responded even worse with even more inflation. And so the Fed has been trained to not let off early. And the indicators that they use to decide what they're going to do with interest rates are very laggy. I think they're on like a six month lag, three to six month lag. I'm not sure which. And so, you know, it's very likely they're going to overshoot, but maybe overshooting is better than like, you know, not killing it. And then it gets worse. It's like taking half of a round of antibiotics. You just train the thing you're trying to kill to be stronger. You need to take it until it's dead, not just train it to be stronger. So, if, if, if interest rates keep going up, then the stock market should keep going down. If stock market keeps going down, Bitcoin should keep going down. Which, by the way, if you look at the grayscale uh, net asset value to Bitcoin price. So grayscale is a trust. Grayscale holds 3% of all the Bitcoin in the world. And uh, I think it's like 330,000 Bitcoin, something like that. Maybe 380,000. They're trading, their, their stock price trades at 47% less than the value of the Bitcoin the trust holds. And I warned everyone, if you think buying the Grayscale Trust discount at 10% is a good deal, you're going to hate it when the Bitcoin price goes down and the discount on the stock goes down and you get killed twice. So, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened to everybody. Exactly what I warned about is so often is the case. The grayscale discount kept getting bigger and the Bitcoin price kept going down. 
And so now everyone that tried to buy the 10%, oh, what a deal, I'm getting 10% off, ultra wrecked. And, and, and I don't know when that will stop. If, if it does stop, I don't know. So, oh, and I, and I love that Michael Saylor finally sold some Bitcoin, but apparently it was just for loss harvesting and he rebought. But I love it when I call the top and he buys the top and it's like, so who are you gonna follow? The guy that got it right or the guy that got it wrong? People follow the guy that got it wrong. The idiot, the loser, the guy that lost money, Michael Saylor, they follow him. <laughs> why? Why why would you why would you follow the guy that bought the top on leverage? You dumb? Why would you follow the guy that called Bitcoin a scam in twenty thirteen and said it was gonna die like online gaming? What? <laughs> he didn't even delete the tweet. So it's funny all, all the uh the scammers that have me blocked. You're like, geez. Maybe they should have followed me and taken my advice and they could have won. Instead, they just get to watch me win. And, and the people that, that listened. So I think, I think crypto will, my guess is that crypto will bottom before stocks. And then we will have the golden bull run. I don't think... Bitcoin's bottom was 15,400. I think it goes to 11K. I don't think Ethereum's bottom was 880. I think it goes deeper, 600, 300. Um, and Hex is interesting. We've never really been correlated with any of these things. And I, I don't know if we are now. I don't know. I mean, people forget this, but when Bitcoin dropped 55% from 65K down to whatever, 28K, Hex went up 30X during that same time period. That's a 60X difference. That's massive decorrelation. And that was a year and a half ago. I, I guess maybe, I mean, the Bitcoin top was like a year and a half ago. And then if we decorrelated for that while, maybe it was like a year ago. I'd have to go check the chart. So Hex has a history of being decorrelated. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, just recently, Hex went up 50%, I think, in the last week. And I think it, it did it while everything else was pretty flat. So check the charts. I just, I, I think that it was an accident. Well, if it's the bear market and all everyone does is press sell, then okay, everything's gonna go down. But the last time it was a bear market and everything else was going down, Hex went up 30X and that's a lot of X. So I, I don't want people to think that Hex is correlated unless there's really good evidence for it. And we know we have really good, good evidence of decorrelation and there's people to publish charts on this. Like there's mathematical formulas you can lose, use to see whether something's really correlated or not. 